All right, friends, in the first video of this lecture series, Pastor Eric began our time together by introducing us to the importance of Bible intake. Uh, he introduced us to the importance of reading our Bible and reading scripture on a regular basis. Now we're gonna continue our study of the spiritual discipline of Bible reading and Bible intake today by discussing the importance of biblical meditation and biblical memorization. Now chances are when you hear the word meditation, uh, you may think of a monk in a far off land with an orange robe and crossed legs doing something like this. Um, um. For some in our culture, meditation is tied to things like yoga and, and new age religion. At least here in the States, meditation has become most linked with a form of Eastern mysticism. Now, some Christians are incredibly uncomfortable when it comes to the idea of meditating. But did you know that meditation is actually modeled and actually encouraged in scripture? Now, of course, meditation in the biblical sense is far different than its secular and Eastern counterparts. Um, whereas all other forms of meditation focus on the process of emptying one's mind to find inner peace, biblical meditation is actually the process in which we fill our minds with the very word of God itself. I like the definition here that Dr. Donald Whitney offers. He says that biblical meditation is the process of deep thinking on the truths and spiritual realities revealed in scripture or upon life from a scriptural perspective for the purpose of understanding, application, and prayer. I like to explain it kind of like this. Think of uh, the difference between reading your Bible and meditating on scripture as the difference between hearing and listening. Now, I have a daughter who's gonna turn four here very shortly, and I have learned in her four years of life that she is an excellent hearer, but she is not always the best listener. For example, I will tell her to go clean her room and, and put her toys away, and I know that she hears me perfectly fine. And so when she fails to execute the task I've assigned, I know it's not merely a hearing issue, it's a listening issue. In many ways, that's the difference between reading God's word and meditating on God's word. When we simply read God's word, we are hearing what God has to say, but when we meditate on God's word, well, that is when true listening begins. Now, meditating on God's word, not just reading God's word, but meditating on God's word is incredibly important in the Christian life. In fact, in James chapter one, James, the half brother of Jesus says this in James chapter one, verse verse 25, he says, blessed is the man, blessed or maybe more literally happy, is the one who looks intently or purposely at the perfect law. Now the title there, perfect law, is a title in general reference there to the word of God. And so it's almost as though James is saying in this one verse that the happy man is the one who meditates on God's very word. We read something similar in Joshua chapter one, verse eight. Now in Joshua chapter one, God is commissioning Joshua to be the leader of his nation Israel. This is before Joshua is to head into the promised land. We read this in Joshua chapter one, verse eight. God tells Joshua this, this book of instruction, literally this book of law, must not depart from your mouth. You are to meditate on it day and night so that you may carefully observe everything written in it, for then you will prosper and succeed in whatever you do. Friends, it's almost as though God tells Joshua in this passage that the only way you will succeed at being a leader for my people is if you meditate on my law both day and night. You know, in a way we could say that the same thing applies to us. The only way that you and I will prosper spiritually is if we commit ourselves to the meditation of God's word. Now, how do we do that? How do we go from merely reading God's word to meditating on it? Actually, I think it's simple. Here's some few steps that I think you should follow. Step number one, slow down. Slow down. You know, most Christians, when they, they pick up their Bible and they, and they try to read it, they try to read as much as they can, as fast as they can. In fact, at the first of the year, millions of people devote themselves to reading the Bible in 365 days in a one year period of time. Some people try to read their Bible in 90 days, others do it in 60 days. I have many friends who try to do it in 30 days. Now this is a great practice and for some it's an easy task, but it is not for everyone. In fact, did you know that there is not a single command in scripture that demands we read our Bible in a certain amount of time? Friends, Bible reading was never meant to be a race, it's a marathon. I'll tell you a couple things that I do. 
oftentimes when I'm studying the book of the Bible, whether it be to teach it or to preach it or even just for personal devotion, I will commit myself to spend at least 30 minutes at a time on each given chapter in a book. Now, in half an hour, I could technically read entire books of the Bible, but over the years of my Christian faith, I have found that if I spend 30 minutes to an hour in one, maybe two chapters of scripture, I learn far more. And so if you're trying to move from just reading God's word to meditating on God's word, step number one is you need to slow down. Step number two is this, as you slowly read through God's word, ask probing questions. Ask questions. Here's questions I like to ask whenever I'm reading through a passage of scripture. Question number one, what does this passage tell me about God? Does this passage teach me, teach me anything about God's nature? Does this passage teach me anything about what he loves, or what he hates? What do I learn about God in this passage? That's the first question I ask. The second question is this, what does this passage teach me about man? Now remember here that mankind is the pinnacle of God's creation, which means that God's word was written for our benefit. And so if, whenever you read a passage, ask questions like, what does the passage teach me about mankind? Does it teach me anything about my identity in Christ? Does the passage teach me anything about my fallen nature? What does this passage teach me about humanity? That's question number two. The third question is this, what does God want me to do or change from this passage? Now, some passages in the Bible are very straightforward when it comes to giving commands. For example, when Paul says in Romans 12, verse 10, to love one another with brotherly affection. Do you know what that means? It means we are supposed to love one another with brotherly affection. It's very cut and dry. When scripture tells us not to lust, that means we are not to lust. When scripture tells us to care for widows and orphans, that means we are to care for widows and orphans. Sometimes it is very clear in a passage what God wants us to do. Other times, the passage may be uh, more subtle in what it commands, but whatever the case, as you read the passage of scripture, ask the question, is there anything God wants me to do or anything God wants me to change? Now, those are the three questions I ask whenever I'm reading a passage. What does the passage teach me about God? What does the passage teach me about man? And what does God want me to do or change? Now, you obviously don't have to use those questions, but I would highly encourage you to ask similar questions whenever you are reading through a given passage of scripture. So that's the second step to biblical meditation, ask questions. Here's the third and final step. Whenever you are trying to go from reading God's word to meditating on God's word, you must commit yourself to memorizing God's word. Now, scripture memorization can be a task that at times seems daunting for many believers. In fact, many people believe that they can't memorize God's word because they don't have the right mind for it. But friends, I promise you that if you have the ability to memorize a phone number, or if you can memorize an address or even a name, if you can do that, then you have the ability to memorize scripture. You know, I like the story of Dawson Trotman. Uh, Dawson Trotman was the leader of the organization called The Navigators, and he came to saving faith in Jesus in the year 19. 26. When Trotman originally got saved, he was living down in Los Angeles and he was serving as a lumberyard truck driver. And right after he became a Christian, he devoted himself to mesmerizing just one verse from the Bible each and every day. What Trotman would do is he would, he would write the verse down and he would sometimes stick it on his truck windshield. Friends, in doing that over the course of three years, Trotman memorized his first thousand verses of scripture which is the equivalent to actually memorizing the entire Gospel of Matthew. And so when it comes to memorizing scripture, start small, just one verse at a time, and you'll be surprised what God could do. Now, how, right, how do we memorize scripture? Well, there's definitely not a one-size-fits-all approach when it comes down to scripture memory. But here's some helpful practices that have aided me through my years as a Christian. For starters, if I'm trying to memorize a passage of scripture, especially if I'm sitting at a table, I would try to write that verse down multiple times. For me, that helps stimulate my memory. Now, of course, saying the verse out loud multiple times can at times help. I'll even at times write a verse down on my hand and, and reference it as I go about the day. Whatever the case and whatever you need to do, you must understand that memorizing the Bible is incredibly important. And friends, we know it's incredibly important because it's something that Jesus did. We read in Matthew chapter four that Jesus was tempted three times by Satan in the desert. And each time Satan tempted Jesus, we read that he confronted the devil with the word of God in which he had memorized. I really like how Donald Whitney explains this passage. He says that each time the enemy 
thrust a temptation at Jesus, he parried it with the sword of the Spirit. You know, the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil, against spiritual forces in the heavens. Friends, until Christ Jesus returns, we are in a constant spiritual war. And one of the best offenses we have are the scriptures that we treasure in our heart, that we commit to memory. Friends, biblical meditation and biblical memorization are vital tools in helping maintain a healthy and functional Christian walk. And I truly hope that this brief video has encouraged you to take those practices maybe just a little bit more seriously. Now for further study, I would encourage you to pick up a copy of Donald Whitney's best-selling book, Spiritual Disciplines for the Christian Life, and be sure to check out other videos that we'll publish in this series. Thanks for watching, friends. I hope this was a blessing to you. Peace out.